Hi guys, uh, Mr. Sinclair, Sinclair, can't even say my own name, uh, here again uh, we're going to run through forms of business organization starting with Soul Trader. So first of all, well these will be all the different things you need to know. So what is it, examples, uh, pros, cons and sort of background of people who become Soul Traders. Alright, so Soul Trader is a business which is owned and controlled by one person. Um, if you think of some examples, we can scroll through here and you can look at the pictures pause these if you feel the need okay so we might want to pause the video now and, and try and see if you can think of between three and five uh, advantages that a sole trader would have other over over other types of business okay so if we're unpaused now then the sort of advantages would be these things easy to set up you have complete control so you're your own boss you don't have to uh, sort of negotiate with anyone else because you're running the business day to day you're the owner manager essentially you can keep all of the profits you can reinvest them but you can keep them if you want it's up to you uh, you can have a quite a personal service because you own and run it so your names over the door so to speak and um, you know you become synonymous with the with the business and also you have privacy in terms of finances you don't have to report your uh, financial performance to anyone except uh, your the, the inland revenue so you have to do an annual tax return and all that maybe your wife or significant other uh, but that's it no one else has to know Okay, so then we have to think about the downside. So you can pause the video and again see if you can rustle up between three to five, five disadvantages of operating on your own. Alright, if you unpause now, these are the sorts of things that hopefully you came up with. The most obvious one is unlimited liability. That means your liability for debts is unlimited. If you run up debts uh, in excess of the value of the business, you can be liable for those debts which would mean for example if you invested five thousand pounds setting up a small business and then managed to um, run up debts of fifty thousand pounds so when the business was shut down and any assets that you own were sold off um, there was still a significant shortfall of what forty five thousand pounds uh, in that case then your creditors the people you owe money to could potentially not always but they could legally come after you to get um, hold of p personal possessions um, that would then be sold off and the, any money generated by the sale of those assets would be returned to the creditors. Now, they don't come round on their own and start, you know, climbing in your windows and stealing your stuff. That's not generally how it works. Um, generally, it would go through the courts. The court would ap ap appoint a, a bailiff who would actually... Uh, you know, essentially a debt collector who would come to your house with a court order saying we have the right to enter these premises and find um, assets to the value of X amount. You know, so it's all done legally. Anyway, you don't need to know all that, but you have to know what unlimited liability is. A shortage of finance because of the, the general lack of business experience that sole traders tend to have and also the lack of assets that they tend to have to use as collateral against their loans. It, it tends to be difficult to borrow money from the banks. They'll want to see at least three years of accounts before they'll lend you money. Um, and if you haven't got three years worth of, of, of accounts then they reckon that you're too high a risk and they probably won't lend you. There's pressure on you because you can't share the workload. You're the owner manager yourself and a lot of sole traders really struggle to do all the different jobs that they have to do. Uh, there's a lack of expertise again because there's only one person who's the owner manager that would mean that then you have a lack of skills in maybe say for example bookkeeping or it could be that you're good at talking to people you're good at marketing you're good at you know coming up with creative promotional campaigns that sort of thing to boost sales but you're not very good at managing your stock um, stock levels and and you know trying to deal with stock efficiently and minimize waste and also there's a lack of continuity which is kind of I always think it's a little bit obscure you know if you die no one else can use the business I, I'm not sure that's going to be your concern if you die that no one else can have your business you're probably preoccupied with being dead so uh, yeah but it is one of the one of the downsides so I guess if you wanted to pass on the business to yourself when you retire you can not actually do that because uh, there's no legal distinction between you and your business 
Okay, you can do some of that stuff. We did it all before, but if you want to look through your notes or your textbook and find some of those exercises, do that. Uh, the next video will be partnerships.